Hi, Burleson in Seventh Avenue Church. I hope you're having a wonderful week. It is beautiful outside. We got a little relief from the rain. And we've got the Sabbath right around the corner, which is also super exciting. I don't know if you had a chance last week to watch the youth church service that we had. I thought Pastor Will delivered an amazing sermon that left me with a lot of hope and encouragement. And, you know, I got some feedback from many of you who watched that service and heard that sermon. And you were wondering like I was, what happened with Pastor Will and his dog, Nova? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to YouTube, go to our church website, and go back and view that sermon. It's it's a blessing. But this, for those that did watch it, you're wondering, right? What happened with Pastor Will and his dog, Nova? He left us with such a cliffhanger. Well, I have got good news. Pastor Orland did some recon, and we found out that Pastor Will and Nova are BFFs. They're best friends. Yay. Well, that's bringing us all a lot of peace, I know. Well, I want to share with you today something really important. We are right around the corner from church opening. Uh, June 6th is the date. So not this Sabbath, but next. And there are some things that we just need to be aware of. So you should have gotten some information in the midweek email. Information that reminds us that church is... Uh, when it does open on June 6th, will only be church. We're not offering any Sabbath schools at this time. In fact, I want to thank the Sabbath school leaders uh, from Nez with the young uh, uh, junior early teen class to our adult classes to Pastor Orland, who's been doing a great job. And anyone I'm forgetting, if you've had anything to do with putting together a Sabbath school program, I want to say thank you. Our Sabbath schools have really been, I think, the glue that has kind of bound us together in this time of separation. And, and it's just been awesome to watch us continue in these small, small groups, lifting each other up, encouraging, studying the word. So I want to say thank you to those leaders who are doing that. And because we don't want to uh, mess with what's working in Sabbath school, and we know we can't offer one in church just yet, we're hoping that we can offer Sabbath school at the beginning of July. Uh, but right now we can't do it just yet in church. Uh, because we don't want to mess with what's currently happening, we're going to be char starting our church service on June 6th, our divine worship, at 11.30 in the morning. So a little later than we used to, at 11. Um, that hopefully will give us time for those that want to have church at home, or excuse me, want to have Sabbath school at home, to be able to then still get to church in time to participate in the worship service. Again, if you're, if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're not feeling well, obviously, if you feel like maybe you have a compromised immune system, we want to encourage you to stay home. We're going to be putting together a, a, a quality online worship service as we have been um, for those that can't make it because we know there's going to be quite a few who can't. But we put a lot of work and planning into making the church safe from having face masks available, hand sanitizing stations available, to having the seating in the sanctuary coordinated in such a way that we're safe, even having overflow seating in the fellowship hall, uh, even the way we're gonna be exiting church, all of that. So things will look a little different when we come back together, but just know that we're doing all of this for a few reasons. One, to maintain safety, not just in our church, but also in our community. And two, to try to get back to what is normal. I know normal is such a, a longed for word these days, right? Normal. I don't know what the new norm will ultimately be, but we want to get back to as much of it as we possibly can as soon as possible. So bear with us as we work toward that end. Having said that, I do want to give us a little bit of encouragement today. Uh, Joel 2.25, a text that I have read many times over and over, but it, it stuck. It struck me this week. This is what it says. God speaking, he says, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locust and the young locust, the other locust and the locust swarm, my great army that I sent among you. God is saying here, I will repay you. I love that. I love that so much because think about it. Back in, in the Bible times when locusts came through, they would ravish the fields. All the food would be gone. And that was how a person survived. They didn't have grocery stores like we have today. They grew their food. And when it was gone, they were in trouble. God says, I will repay you. In other words, not only will he get us through, but he's going to make it up to us. And I believe that's true today with COVID, with some of the things that we're experiencing. Maybe it's not even COVID. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's a relationship that's hurting and struggling and broken. 
them. Maybe it's another physical ailment or issue. Maybe it's financial. I don't know what struggle you're necessarily going through right now, but I want you to know that God says he will repay you. He will make it up to you. And we know part of that making it up to us is the day when Jesus comes again to take us home. May we continue to keep our eyes on that moment in time, right? So church, I just want to remind you, Jesus loves you so, so very much. So do I, and we'll see you soon. God bless you.